It's been enormously fun along the way. This has been th the best project almost, doing these big scale tests where there's lots of energy and uh, it's been super fun. We set out at Rocket Lab to, to try and recover the vehicle, primarily uh, you know, to increase production. And first I didn't think you know, it was feasible to do with a small launch vehicle because if you look at all the traditional approaches, they're just not going to work. You don't have the propellant margins in a small launch vehicle. So um, we had to look at different approaches. And as we started to, to pull real data from real flights, um, it became obvious that there was an approach that, we, that, that could work. It was a little bit unconventional and we started off down that path. So after separation, it will coast on up to, to Apogee, do a flip, come in engines first, accelerates for a while as it comes in and then decelerates, getting very hot in the process. Once we're down to about Mach 1.5, we'll activate a mortar, which will deploy a drogue parachute. That will slow it down further. And then when we're down to two or three kilometers altitude, we'll extract the main parachute, which is a, a big 18 meter ring sail. And that will slow us down to a fairly modest velocity of about 10 meters per second, where we'll take a, a splash in the ocean. A lot of it comes down to just the, the size and mass constraints that, that we're dealing with. Trying to package a whole load of extra equipment, mortar, extra parachutes, uh, reaction control system, uh, gas bottles for that and the additional electronics into a volume that's already very tightly filled with the, the second stage uh, rocket engine and uh, battery compartment. That was probably our biggest challenge. Yeah. The most important thing that we're trying to achieve here is just to get the stage down to earth in one piece or as close to one piece as possible. Um, so we won't be trying to scoop it out of the sky with a helicopter. We have demonstrated that we can do that, um, so I'm not too worried about that. The real challenge for us here is getting it through the wall getting it under a parachute, getting it decelerated, and gently touching down into the ocean where we'll go and pick it up with recovery vessels. Okay, the main parachute on the stage is a ring sail parachute. This was a design that NASA used way back at the sort of dawn of the space age. Um, the same design used for the, the Mercury and Gemini and Apollo uh, spacecraft. It's much easier to deploy, especially at high speeds, which means we don't need a, a complicated parachute system to, to get it out there. Uh, so that's why we've chosen ring sail parachute for now as opposed to a, a kind of gliding parachute that we looked at previously. It's kind of like uh, a CSI scene. We really start to peel back uh, the onion and understand exactly what's happened. There's nothing like actually having a flight article that's returned to understand the margin here and the margin there and which bits really worked well and which bits are just roasted up completely. Um, if we get the stage back, we'll have a really good idea of how much work we've got ahead of us. Recovery for our customers is really about making sure that there's, there's more launch opportunities available. Um, you know, if we can recover a stage, we can, we can open up many, many more launch opportunities and create a much more flexible environment for our customers to pick and choose which flight they want to get on, uh, ultimately try and lower the cost, uh, and just, just make launch even that more prolific.